Hey everyone, welcome back to the Brompton Family Time. Today we're gonna be working on the brakes. As you can see, I got the EE brakes from Cane Creek and these are the G4 and the colorway is called El Tornado. El Tornado. El Tornado. El Tornado. All right, I'll put the description in the video here. <laughs> these brakes, whoever named it, you know, gave it a specific reason why they called it El Tornado and it's a gold blue black combination these brakes have been used on the Brompton for um, many years you know people have upgraded the brakes using this system I've always wanted to buy these for my super lights in the past but I just couldn't justify the price but for the t-line you know this is my dream bike so I went ahead and I purchased them I installed the brakes onto the back of the bike and in this video we're gonna put it onto the front they come in a box like this you have the brake here. We'll put close-ups in the video. Okay. And they're called direct mount because they have two bolts in the back. And this is what is used to mount it onto the fork. These brakes are built for road bikes. So they're very thin, lightweight. And you have to use an adapter to get them to work on the Brompton. I've seen maybe two other ways of mounting them onto the Brompton but it also depends on if you have the direct mount or the regular mount, okay? But today in this video, we'll be talking about the direct mount. It also comes with the brake pads, some other small parts in the bag, and this is what the instruction uh, looks like. It's a two-sided uh, page, and it goes into detail on how to install them. And also they have a very good video online on how to install them. Since we'll be installing these on the Brompton, we do have to attach the adapter to the caliper first and then mount it to the bike, okay? For my bike, I'm going to be running the wires the same way that a stock Brompton has the wires, okay? You could also mount them differently on the front. Um, I've seen some bikes that only use front brakes and they just delete the rear brakes. Um, but in my case, I need both brakes. Okay, so for this installation, you need to have three pieces. You need to have the caliper, a mounting kit, and a reverse wire guide kit. Step one, we're going to have to actually remove the pieces on the brake caliper that we don't need. So since this is built for a road bike and the cable direction usually comes in from the top and gets uh, routed to the side over here, we're going to be routing it from the bottom and looping it up. Okay, so that is where the reverse mounting um, kit comes into play. All right, so the first step will be to remove the spring simply by pulling it out and make sure you don't scratch the nice finish. Okay, and that'll go back in later. Now we're going to take out the screws because they're too short and install the longer ones in its place. And if you look at uh, this closely, it does have Loctite on it. So when we put the new one in, we're going to have to put a little bit of Loctite on. All right. And the side with the nut on it does not have Loctite. Okay. So we're just going to put Loctite on this side. This is removable Loctite. There we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna wipe off the excess uh, lactite so it doesn't get all over the place. Next, we can take off this top piece, like so. We're not gonna be using this piece, and instead of this piece, we'll be using this piece. We're going to put the brake pads into the sleeve here. I have brand new carbon brake pads from the SMC uh, wheel sets, so I'm going to use those first and then once those wear out, I'll put these on. The next step 
is to remove the spacers. To remove the arm here, you actually need a T25, okay? So this does require a little bit of specialty, uh, I guess, uh, screwdrivers. Okay, and we'll put that back on because we don't want to lose any of the smaller pieces. All right, and we'll do the same for the other side. Okay, drop that out. Okay, and that's good for now. We'll adjust them perfect later. And now we can slide in the brake pads. Okay, and make sure it's in all the way. Once it's in all the way, it'll actually s sit down nicely. All right, that's perfect. You can see that it's nice and flat in between here. And we'll do the other one. Same way, and push it down, and we're good to go. So on the stock Brompton caliper, you'll notice there's actually a small screw and to keep it in place. These don't have them, so it's very important that you have the direction of these pads correctly once you mount them. The next step is to actually mount them to uh, the mounting bracket. And we'll simply slide it on this way. Let's see. Okay. And then we'll take the washers, put them on here. Put the other washer on the other side, like so. We'll get some Loctite. Little drop, little drop. This screw, this screw is gonna go in here like this. Okay. Supposed to go in smoothly, but apparently not. There we go. Okay, before you tighten the left side bolt here, you want to make sure your cable is in the right channel location, okay? Because this will get threaded into the side here. Okay, so first we're going to put the washer onto this piece here. And then we'll thread this in. Okay, and I'll just give it a little twist with this, just to give it nice little tension. All right, that's good. So before you tighten this bolt right here, you have to make sure that the cable guide is in the right position. And this is the bottom part where the cable is going to loop into. So you'll, you can stick the toothpick inside or in my case, a Allen key here. And you want to get it as close to straight as possible. Okay. And from here to here, you want the cable to be nice and straight. Um, let me do it for this way so it doesn't fall out. Okay, now that it's nice and straight here, um, you do want to torque it so it doesn't move. Okay, so we'll put this in here. And now we can torque it. All right. Okay, and now I can take this out here and the cable should be in the best routing position possible. Put the spring back into place. This part you do want to take your time so you don't scratch the finish. Okay, perfect. We're going to be reusing the washer from the old uh, caliper. Put it on here like so. And now we can mount it to the bike. Okay, and this part is part of the original caliper as well. This has the magnetic pedal holder in the back.
All right, and the next step will be to adjust the brake pads so they're even onto the rim surface. So put it where we want it, like so. Okay, that side's good. And the right side is already good. All right, so this is the original cable and you actually do have to buy a universal cable to make this work. I'm going to reuse the outer cable that came with the bike, but I do need to use a new inner cable because this one's not long enough. We're gonna back this one out from the top. You can see actually on this side, it comes out that way. So, okay, so then it just simply pops out here and you can just pull it all the way out, okay? All right, and to put the new one on, you simply push it in here, like so. And once you have it on there, you can actually put it on here and then you can twist this and that'll keep the cable in and then you can thread the rest of it uh, through the outer cable. Okay. Oh. okay, so the front brake does have three, t three parts that it's broken down into, so Let's just take your time. This part of the cable end needs to go into the piece right here. Now, this is the stock piece that was on the bike, the cable end. Sometimes you may have to sand this or smush the end of it so it's perfectly round uh, to get it in. And you'll notice that the cable routing, it's in the same location as the stock one. I can tell because the rub marks are in the exact same location. So this cable should work fine. So this is the most important part of the entire system because this is what locks the cable onto the brake caliper. We're gonna thread this into here and Open her up, the cable will come out on top, like so. And this is what sits on the bike here, like so, okay? And that's what keeps the brake pads on. Sometimes you have to use your mouth. You gotta get creative. All right, and then we can just lock it a little more. Okay. okay. All right, so we just make sure the wheel spins freely. Uh, you could look at it from this angle here. You can see that there's plenty of tire space here. Generally, you want one to two millimeters of space on each side. This little piece right here, this is how you make fine adjustments to uh, one side. This way, when you squeeze the brakes, it applies equal force uh, to both sides. Okay, I'm looking at it from the top and the left and right side do appear to be contacting the rim at the same time and they do feel good. All right, so I'm going to cut the wire because we don't need all of this excess wire and then put the uh, cable cherry back on. This looks good. Cable cherry on right away. Okay, let's sit this way. If you don't use the cable end, uh, it will fray and it'll look ugly. And you can accidentally rub against it and it can cut you. 
So it's very important to have some type of end on your cables. I'm going to make torque adjustments to the brake pads so they don't move anymore. And then we're done. The install itself is pretty straightforward. It doesn't take that much time. Once you do one, one brake, the other one becomes much faster. This colorway, I love it. It makes a bike look 10 times better, in my opinion. This company does release limited editions every so often. So if you find a color that you like, please grab it, and I'm pretty sure you'll be happy, just as I am. All right, thank you for joining. Uh, if you wanna see more videos, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll continue upgrading the T-Line into my dream bike. All right.